Good afternoon, everyone. Um, hope you're having a great show, great Cisco Live. So uh, my name is Guillaume. I'm actually in charge of engineering for a special team at Cisco, which is called Emerging Tech and Incubation. So if you want to think about us, um, we're really Cisco's incubator, right? So our mission in my team is to establish Cisco with new products in new areas where we are not playing yet, right? So that's um, a lot of innovation going on. And so I'm in charge of engineering. A good part of the team is in the US. A good part of the team is in Europe. A good part of the team is in Israel. All the usual suspect locations. And uh, I'm based in Paris, so it was not too far for me to come and talk uh, to you today. Um, and just so you know, the primary mission we have is to think about uh, and to work on new products to help um, Cisco and our customers and partners get into what we what, what is really the application layer. Of course, at Cisco, we work a lot on the infrastructure, but all these infrastructure are here to power applications. And so we're, my team is really working on bringing new tools, services, products to simplify people who have to develop and run applications. And the primary motivation is that applications are super important, right? We do everything with apps these days. And these applications are also getting increasingly, increasingly complex, right? These applications are getting bigger, they're super powerful, and they are much more distributed. And they tend to run across multiple clouds. Before, we used to develop monolith application. Now we assemble applications from many building blocks uh, across open source, um, you know, third party providers, your own piece of code. And this is really the problem space where we are bringing all the strengths of Cisco on connectivity, security, observability, but purely at the application layer, which is new. And we do that targeting new type of personas, you know, new type of buyers, new type of uh, users, and profoundly developer oriented. And this is why a lot of what we do has a lot of open source in it, because it's the only way you can get the attention of a developer in the world is you know, if a good part of what you do is open source. So why am I sharing this preamble? I'm sharing this preamble so that you guys know, you know what, what my team is doing. And what I'm going to talk about is, um, by the way, before I talk too much, I talk a lot always. So if um, I don't have time to finish my presentation, you can reach me on this app. There is an app for this session. I'll stick around for a few more minutes. We can chat. And um, so when we, when we work on new products, um, we're always looking for use cases. If there is not a use case, it, it's not good, right? We need to know what the tools or product we are building will solve. So we're always looking for use cases. Where is the use case? Where is the use case? So today, I want to talk to you about a use case which I think is so significant. I called it the use case of the century. <laughs> it's a use case which, fortunately or unfortunately, actually is going to keep us busy for several decades, right? And this is obviously about um, sustainability. And this is about acknowledging the fact that if we want to have a nice future, <laughs> we need a, a healthy planet. And um, I'm not going to get into you know, the detail of that, because I'm sure that if you're even sitting here, you are at least remotely aware of the small climate change problem we have uh, on the planet. But what is really at stake is that we need to limit these um, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, otherwise, things will go not too well for all of us in the future, right? And so this is really what I call a use case of the century. And what I'll try to do in the next few minutes is explain and share with you why you know, this use case is important and why it's an incredible um, IT and digitization use case. Um, so when you think about reducing carbon footprint, driving sustainability, you really think about um, primarily material layer and energy layers, right? This is about using more efficient forms of energy, this is about trapping carbon. This is a lot about the material and the energy layer. It has not much to do with the information layer. Where the information layer gets involved and where IT can help 
is by driving actually the information layer and the feedback loop which is needed on top of all these uh, um, activities to get to doing two things. The first thing is you cannot improve what you're not measuring. So having a much more accurate way to measure emissions is problem number one, and it's a data problem. And once you have access to this information, it's nice to have the information that you have a problem, but you need to be able to act upon it and activate a feedback loop. And this feedback loop is also, in good part, driven at the information layer. So this is basically where we see a massive use case. And I'm going to tell you about a number of technologies which my team is incubating, which we hope and we think will play a role amongst many others in solving and cracking this use case in the future. So before I get into more detail, um, and by the way, I'm doing a longer version of this talk tomorrow. So if you're really interested, um, you can join tomorrow and uh, it's, it's an hour. Today is just 20 minutes. So one thing which is um, a bit misleading, and I'm sure you've, like anyone, you've been reading about uh, global warming and, and all the, the challenges we are fronting. So this is the kind of challenge we have, like about half of the emission must be in place by 2030 to keep, you know, some people are considering this is already not reachable. <laughs> it's already too late, you know, it will be worse than this. What is a little bit misleading is we are talking about 2030, 2040. Many companies are taking net zero pledge, uh, like Cisco, we did for 2040. Other companies, you know, for sooner, same date or later. And then we are thinking, you know, by 2070, climate will be like this, by, you know, a next century. And all these considerations which are important are a bit misleading because it makes us feel like, okay, uh, this might be a big problem. It's a multi-decade. It's a multi-decade problem. So for sure, it's a multi-decade problem. But <laughs> actually, no, it's a today problem. It, it, it's, it's something which has so much momentum and our inertia. It's actually, it was a yesterday problem. So it's already too late, you know. But, but <laughs> it's never too late to start addressing this, right? And if you think this, you'll hear about this, you know, and see really the effects in two, three, four, five decades Unfortunately, as you know, we're on an exponential slope and we're, you know, this decade, this is a this decade, this is a this year problem. So we need to act upon this. So that's why I'm talking about it. It's really important. It's uh, the time is now. So considering sustainability, uh, I'll go a bit quicker here. There's two things that Cisco is doing. And it's important to triage this in your and not just for Cisco, for companies in general and for IT in general. It's important to separate the two things. The two things are super important. There's two different things with regard to IT and sustainability. The first one is what we call green IT. So Cisco, as an IT company, we have a lot of goals and uh, we are taking very seriously the, 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 the sustainability uh, 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 topic. And we are making a lot of efforts uh, to improve the energy consumption of our product, to play a key role into making sure that the IT footprint of our own solution is not, you know, creating, is as optimized as possible. And it's a roadmap. And if you're interested, there is an entire booth a little bit here on the, on the left when you exit, which is all dedicated to that. It's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about something different. The footprint of IT emission is not neglectable. It's something that we need to optimize. But the vast majority of the emissions are coming from other domains. And what I'm talking about is how we can use IT as a digitization use case to measure emission much better and drive them uh, to a reduction. So it's a pure, it's a use case. It's just a giant one. It's a giant one for the following reason. I don't know if um, who's familiar with this um, picture, uh, and maybe, I'm sorry, maybe this is an eye test. So this is the principle of the different scope of emissions. Who has seen that already? You guys have, have, have seen that? Okay, so it's, it's just one slide, but this is the slide, if you want to understand, right? So the problem we are trying to solve is we want to reduce emissions, but, and it's not Cisco, it's, you know, governments and international organizations. We've agreed on something on this model to actually measure the emissions. So when you're, an, when you're a company, 
you have three types of emissions. Scope one, two, three. Scope one is, you know, like the impact of your direct activity, like, you know, your office space, your buildings, you know, uh, people uh, uh, working, your, your, your fleet of vehicles, all this type of stuff, right? Your direct activity, this is scope one. Most of the time, this is not the biggest scope or the biggest emission for a company. The scope two is everything which your company is directly generating in terms of energy consumption. Basically, it's your utility bill, you know, your electricity bill, uh, your whatever, any type of energy you're consuming. This is scope two. And scope three, which is probably the most important, is everything upstream and downstream you're going to trigger in your value chain across the industry. Think about, um, I don't know, I'm, let's say, you know, I run a company and uh, I have, I'm an e-commerce platform and all I do really is run a website because everything else, you know, I just reference products and people are bringing product to the website, selling, you know, all the logistic, everything is, you know, outsourced upstream, downstream. I'm just running the website and taking the payments. You could say, well, you know, guys, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm carbon great, right? I'm, I'm not really, I don't really have a significant footprint. But you cannot get away without acknowledging for all the, <laughs> the, carb the carbon footprint you're triggering across the rest of the industry. And so this simple idea is that your scope one and two is the scope three of others and vice versa. And this is exactly the type of problem we are trying to tackle accurate measurement for these scopes across the entire, across the entire what? Across the entire value chain of all economical activities of all verticals and not just economies, but also all the public services, all the governments. So, so when you think about the size of this use case, it's as big as the entire economy. It's not even true. It's as big as the sum of all the human activities, right? It's, it's giant, right? That's why I'm calling it use case of the century. So is it a simple problem to solve? It's a nasty problem to solve. It's a giant data problem, right? And when you, when you want to uh, crack this, you actually have to solve a lot of difficult data problem. Not only it's a different, difficult IT problem, but it's a growing regulated space. Um, in Europe, in the US, all across the world, the regulation on this is growing. And there is an entire business with, which is emerging. You're all probably um, familiar with um, financial auditing and accounting, right? There are some companies, I don't know, just to name a few, we all know them, you know, Deloitte, uh, KPMG, uh, EY, and the likes. They come and they, they audit your accounts as a company and they you know, make all your reporting and they make sure that you're compliant. So guess what? These guys are seeing an entire new business opening for them and users, but they are well positioned. This is a bit similar to financial accounting, but this is about carbon accounting, right? And not just because it's fun to do or because this is the right thing, it's because it's becoming a regulation. So there is a, there is a carrot to actually do the right thing, but there is also a stick coming, right? So we have to, we have to embrace that. And if you think that this is not too important for your business or for the business of the companies you're interacting with, this is only going to increase much faster than people think, by the way. In the future, even, even if you want to still be able to find an assurance as, a, as an enterprise for your activities, if you're, if you're not showing strong compliance, you won't be even able to find you know, an insurance for, to cover your activity. So it's, it's going pretty, pretty far. So the thesis here is that this big data problem, data do not live in isolation. They live um, and they are, they are being created and they are being managed through applications. So this giant data problem actually is a giant application problem. And um, let me tell you a bit more about how we can solve this and what we see here. So there is a nice uh, use case. Uh, you might know uh, that uh, the next Olympics will um, take place in Paris. Uh, this is exciting for, it turns out that I'm based in Paris, so of course this is a big thing for us. And um, Cisco is a partner uh, of the Olympics organization. We're providing a lot of 
you know, solution for this, of course, networking, cybersecurity, collaboration. And we also have an innovation program. And so we are we're testing new ideas. And we're working here with uh, partners at Orange for one of the stadiums. So this is specifically for the, the soccer. S soccer is an Olympic discipline. And most of the stuff is happening in Paris, except for soccer, it's going to happen all, all across the territory. And in uh, sunny Marseille, there is this wonderful stadium called Velodrome, which you see here. And so there is even one in, you know, surfing will be in Tahiti, which is another nice uh, <laughs> exception. But um, in this stadium, so, so th th there are very significant carbon emission uh, reduction um, goals for the Olympics next year. They want to go from 3.5 uh, million tons of emission to 1.5, which is a drastic reduction. And they want to offset most of it, actually. So to help, uh, we're looking into you know, new use case of this bigger use case. And in this case, how we can optimize. A stadium is, a, is just a portion of a, of a city. Right? It's so big. And it has a lot of different things which we can optimize in the way it consumes energy, in the way it runs you know, all the digital signage, in the way it runs you know, all the HVAC, you know, air conditioning or heating systems, uh, you know, up to how you know, we can manage waste management or even the watering system to water the lawn and all these things. So it's uh, an incredible uh, living lab for us to experiment. And uh, we've actually already installed some uh, equipment and solution. And you know, starting with what we have direct control on, we are currently making sure that we can drive very efficiently all the IT and all the Wi-Fi equipment there. And we are going to expand to you know, other uh, uh, dimensions. And what we do is a s relatively simple idea. You know, a stadium is not like a zero or one. It's not like the stadium is switched off and there is nobody, or the stadium is fully you know, loaded with a big event and everyone is there. There's already, obviously, many shades of gray, and we want to make sure that we can drive the amount of uh, Wi-Fi we we, we've, we're firing up based on um, the usage and the level of occupancy of the stadium. And this is where we are doing a lot of sensor fusion, especially between the camera system and the Wi-Fi system in this case. So to do this type of solution, um, you might think, well, that's easy. Um, bunch of sensors, some IoT devices. We throw everything in the cloud, and we solve it there. Um, that's not a bad start, but it's not good enough. Right? So we need something a bit, a bit better, especially if we want to address these things very seriously at scale. So this is approximately, approximately right. But actually, we need something a little bit more detailed, which looks more like something like this. right? So I'm not going to you know, uh, uh, hammer you too much with all the details. But there is a few technology which I want you to uh, be aware of. So technology uh, number one, I see I have three minutes, so I'll try to uh, uh, go quickly. So the first thing is we need to push much more intelligence at the edge, right? business intelligence at the edge. It's not enough to have sensors and to have IoT. It's great to have IoT, but it's just not enough for some of these advanced use cases. So we need to move a lot of the application business logic at the edge. So you might think, well, that's easy. Just take the great application stack we have in the cloud and extend it to the edge. Yeah, of course. So here is the small problem. This stack breaks when you try to extend it fully at the edge. Or if you want it not to break, you have to bring like very heavy equipment. We actually want to go with what we call application nodes, very small computer, which you can uh, distribute in an optimized way, low consumption, and able to run all these applications. So for that, we have a program called Great Bear. And the next speaker, Frank, who's over there, is going to tell you about it in the next session. So if you want to stick around, you'll know everything about Great Bear, which is one of our incubation projects, which, um, which is very interesting. The other thing is you have a data brokering problem. So if you want all these different organic, take the stadium example, take any other example, you know, optimizing energy and sustainability and carbon footprint for an entire city, for instance. You will have to broker data across many organizations. So how do you do that? It's actually not an easy, pro an easy problem. You want to take data from many organizations. You want the data to stay with these organizations because they don't like others to have access to their data. And at the same time, you want to expose a sort of a consistent API so that developers can develop on top 
nice, useful applications such as measuring ac with accuracy, uh, again, the emissions and driving the efficiency. So there is a nice project called Bitbroker, which is there, bitbroker.io. We've entirely open sourced it. It does exactly that. If you have a problem where you have many organizations, different organizations with different interests who needs to collaborate with clear rules and clear legal terms on who can access to what, this does the job. And I know what some of you are thinking. Why don't we use Web3 and blockchain for that? Yes, this is some of the possibilities which we're also looking into. But at this stage, you know, you already have a first level of solution here. This is entirely open source, free to use. Would love to, you know, find more partners to collaborate on this. Uh, and then, just to finish, I mentioned that this a, a giant data problem is a giant application problem. So here's the good news. Cisco is really starting to fully enter into the application, um, the application layer, what we call the cloud-native application infrastructure management. And we have two products which are being showcased at the back of the hall over there, uh, World of Solution in the back on the, on the left, Panoptica and Calisti. Panoptica is giving you security at scale for cloud-native application, and Calisti is giving you connectivity, as in service mesh, connectivity across all these different application components which needs to communicate. It's very new for Cisco to do that because it's, again, purely at the application layer. But um, we think that we are coming with, our, with the right DNA to solve that. So if you want to have demos of this, it's right at the back. And this is going to help not just us, but partners, and especially uh, folks who are starting to bring these SaaS solutions to, to help companies measure and optimize their carbon footprint is probably not something which Cisco will do in the future, never say never, but actually we want to work with these guys and we want to enable them and their partner and go back to the scope three. This is a giant problem. If you start somewhere, you immediately trigger the entire chain end to end. So again, it's, um, it's difficult to think about a bigger problem which the, not just the industry, but the world will have to solve in the future. And so we think that all these components are going to be um, uh, useful at some point. And if you want to know more about green light, you need to come to the longer session because that's more concept. But uh, you know, I have a nice video to show you where we are thinking you know, uh, some solution in the in industry can go. So with all this, um, I'm not going to comment this one because Frank is going to do it in a few minutes. And as I said, Calisti Panoptica, all demos are available. Um, you can search it. Calisti, Panoptica, we have dedicated websites. You'll find all the information. Just to conclude, and this is an important conclusion. So yes, the message is, you know, we need to rally. We need to think about it. We need to, we, nobody's going to solve this use case instantly, but we need to start somewhere. It's um, a, a, a high number of fragmented use case which progressively needs to embrace this type of solutions. And, um, you know, sometimes people think, you know, I have to choose between, you know, am I going to do the right thing and go the, sustainab the su sustainable way or am I going to prioritize business? One of the, one of the fundamental ideas which I would like to leave you with is you do not have to basically make a choice. This will go alongside, together. The most performing organizations, the most innovative organizations are going to be the one also opening the way, leading by example on the sustainability aspect. And it's not just because there will be the stick of the regulation, which is coming, by the way, <laughs> so it's a good one. You know, think about it. You can't sell your products in a given market simply because they are not, you know, they are not certified, they are not approved anymore, right? This, so this is something we and many others are taking seriously. But also, if you're leading on sustainability, it will mean that you're ahead of the game on your digitization game. And it will mean that you're so optimized that just to perform your activities, your scope and your energy consumption is going to be lower than your competitor. You're going to be more competitive. So, Again, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really simplifying and going quick, but I'd like to leave you with this idea. You don't have to choose. 
you can do both at the same time. You can be super competitive and ahead of the game on sustainability. It's, uh, it's important to internal internalize this. I don't know if Cisco is a perfect example, but um, take a look at everything we do. Again, the booth is a bit further here. It's a green thing in the middle. It's written sustainability, and you'll see the number of initiatives we have across a company like Cisco. And hopefully in the future, more like the stuff I just presented. I hope it was interesting. Thanks for your attention. And again, the longer version with more videos and examples on the stadium and what we've done is for tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much. Um, that's it. Uh, by the way, I need to show that I've been talking today. These are all the sessions from my colleagues and other organizations in Cisco about sustainability. So if you're interested, there is more coming. And if you've missed some of these, everything will be available on demand. So you can go back and you know, um, learn from it. Uh, you know, even after, even when you're back home after Cisco Live. Thank you so much. <laughs>